In this section, I am going to cover how you would use cues to play back effects on the EOS. So let's take a look at this. Now one of the things to remember about playing back effects in cues is that you apply the effect to a channel just like you would any other level. So just like I can take channel 1 to full, I can take my LED wall to effect number 7. And that's what I'm going to do for my first example. What I want to do is, starting with this cue that I have up now, I want to create a new cue with my blue-red absolute effect playing. And what I want to do first is just take those channels and apply the effect. And I know the effect has been applied because I look on my channel display and I can see that there is now a manual value applied to the color parameter of my LED wall. And it says E7 for effect 7. Now I simply just have to record a cue and that value will be stored as will any other value that is in that queue. So I record this as a new Q10. And now my values indicate that it's recorded into the queue. And in my queue list, I can see that I have an E7 in my external links column to tell me that effect 7 is now part of queue number 10. So now if I look at that transition, step back into queue 9, push go, the effect will fade in in the time of the queue and we get a nice transition from just a solid blue wall to our absolute effect. Now I want to write a cue that takes the effect out. So I can, I can take the effect out in a couple of different ways. I can hit my stop effect key and then the effect, or I can simply choose the effect and hit add enter. Either way works. I'm going to say stop effect 7, and that will take my LED wall to the background value, and the color will say that it's in stop. And now I can record a new cue, record 11. And now we have the wall recorded without an effect applied. Now when I run that sequence, Q10 is a nice fade in for that effect. And Q11 is a nice fade out of that effect. Now there are some other behaviors that we can apply to effects fading in and out using entry and exit behavior. And we have a series of cues written that will illustrate this in, in, in more vivid, um, as a more vivid example. And we're, we're, we're not doing this to make a, a pretty look on the stage. We really want to do the next series of cues so that we can show you exactly how all of this is going to work. So I'm going to move into my cue number 12. And we're going to start with all of uh, these moving lights aimed at the center. And what we have is the first thing that's going to happen in my Q13 is the focus effect is going to start. And I want to look at the focus effect in the effect editor. It's effect 901. And where we're really looking here is on the right-hand side, we have some fields. One says entry, exit, and then there's a time field below each one of those. The behavior for entry and exit, there are a couple of different options. For entry, we're looking at cascade or immediate, and a fade by size, and fade by size and rate. And we're going to look at examples of each of those. And by default, the timing parameter for entry and exit will take the timing of the queue. Now, I can specify here a specific time. Uh, but by default, the entry and exit time will take the timing of the queue that the effect is playing back in. So let's, let's look at this. When I play back Q13, that focus effect is going to do a cascade in. And what this allows the effect to do is take each light individually and put it into the effect in order. So let's take a look at that. So that was a cascade entry. The next example is going to apply my color effect immediate. So it won't cascade in. All of the lights will start the effect at the same time in the time of the queue, which is five seconds. So we get all of the lights simultaneously do a five second fade into the hue saturation fade. And the next example will fade by size and rate my zoom effect. So what's going to happen is the zoom effect will start off slow and little and will gradually over the time of the queue fade to big and fast. So let's look at that. So those are some of the entry behaviors. Let's take a look at some exit behaviors, because the exit behaviors are very, very similar, but we've applied different ones so you can see how that works. And we've applied a different exit behavior to each effect in the next queue. 
what's going to happen with the focus effect is it's going to do what's called a stop and fade. So when I execute the next cue, those lights will stop where they are and fade to their new position, which has been recorded in a different location in Q16. The color is going to do just a stop, so the color will freeze where it currently is. And the zoom effect is going to do the reverse of what it did. It's going to fade by size and rate again, so it will go from uh, zooming big and fast and it will go to little and slow. So let's take a look at all of that happening at once. Color stopped. Focus does a stop and fade to a new position, and our zoom effect did the reverse of how it got into the zoom effect, fading by size and rate. And those are the methods that you can use to playback effects in cues on the EOS.